Eating out can be a real problem for those of us who are trying to be very careful about how many carbs we allow ourselves, especially since so many fast food restaurants include items which have a lot of bread to them. In this video, I'll share a simple but powerful way to cut those carbs, keep your blood sugars on the safe side, and still enjoy many fast food items. One of the simplest ways to make bread acceptable in your low-carb diet is to cut it in half. It's a rule of mathematics that if you cut something into two pieces and then take one of those pieces away, you've reduced all that food represents by half. In other words, if I cut a piece of bread in half, what is left now has half the calories, half the sugar, and half the carbs. You may say, well, so what? But it actually is a powerful truth that can work on your behalf. In so many of the ways we eat bread, we have our bread in pairs. A bun has two pieces, top and bottom. A sandwich has two pieces of bread, again, top and bottom. But what if we remove one of those pieces of bread? We've just cut our carbs in half. Now, with sandwiches and hamburgers, it makes no sense to remove the bottom part. All your in-between stuff is going to fall to the floor. But there's no reason in the world you cannot remove the top part. Here are a few examples of this. Well, I'm here at my local McDonald's and I've got one of my favorite quick and cheap meals, which is a McDouble. And it is, of course, a hamburger. Hamburger has two buns and I'm gonna do my magic surgery on it. Presto changeo, suddenly I have rid myself of half the calories, but more importantly, half the carbs. Well, my meal is finished and look what I have left. But I don't just see this as a half of a hamburger bun. I see this as sugar. I have saved myself quite a few carbs by the simple action of removing the top bun. My blood sugar is going to thank me for it. Well, here at Whataburger, one of my go-to sandwiches is this baby. It's called Breakfast on a Bun. And as far as breakfast sandwiches go, it is a big one. And that means the bun is big, which could be a problem. But once I do my surgery, I've saved myself a lot of carbs. Problem is, all the cheese is stuck to the top part, so I can't take off the top part. I flip it over, take off the bottom bun, and guess what? I've saved myself a whole lot of carbs. Now I can enjoy this baby without feeling guilty. Well, here at Burger King, I sometimes get a Whopper, and this is a big hamburger. The problem with a big hamburger is not a big hamburger patty, but big bun. And so we have to do our normal surgery, which is to take off the top. It's a little bit messy, but I just put up with it. But we find that the bottom bun overlaps the meat, and so we want to do some further surgery. The idea behind our bun surgery is this. No unnecessary bread is allowed. If the bottom bun sticks out over the edges of the hamburger patty, that excess bread must go. We must be ruthless in this. Well, now we've got the bun whittled down to size and I can eat it and enjoy it and I don't think it's going to raise my blood sugar too much. We'll see. My meal is over and look what I've got left over. Not only the big old monster top part of the bun, but even some from the bottom. That makes me feel good. I saved a lot of carbs. My blood sugar will not rise nearly so high as it would had I eaten this and this. Well, I'm here at the mall with a panini. A panini sounds like a very strange name for a, a, a food, and it, it's kind of embarrassing to ask for it. Give me a panini, please, or no, make that two paninis. But in any case, they're actually pretty good. And the truth is a panini is about like a glorified hamburger. As with a hamburger, you've got bread on both sides and meat and some other stuff on the inside. Actually, we've got bread on three sides, top, bottom, and the side here, so there's a lot of bread going on. Well, as usual, we have to do a little surgery to make this acceptable. And so what we're going to do is do a little tearing apart of this, if you want to call it a bun, it's not really a bun, but we're going to have to get this acceptable by reducing a lot of the bread so that it will not raise my blood sugar so much. So let's try a little surgery on this panini. As I cut and tear and shave off bread, keep in mind that what I'm emphasizing is not a no-carb lifestyle, 
but a low-carb lifestyle. Over a lifetime, the carbs we save this way can result in much lower blood sugar and can make a huge difference in our health. You know, when my meal is over, it gives me a great deal of satisfaction to look at what I did not eat. Now, these two pieces of flatbread don't look all that imposing, don't look all that dangerous, but when you add these to what I had that I did eat, if I'd eaten it all, it would be a different story than it's gonna turn out to be. So I'm thankful, these things make me feel good. I was responsible, I ate what I should, I left off what I should, and I think my blood sugar scores are gonna reflect that. While I was out eating these various foods without the top bun, I did what I do so much. I tested my blood sugar before the meal and then one hour after the meal was over. And then I went back to the same restaurants and ate those same foods, but this time I left the top bun on. As before, I tested my blood sugar before the meals and one hour after finishing the meals. Here is what I found. With half of the bread removed on these four foods, my blood sugar levels peaked under my allowable maximum of 140. With the Whataburger breakfast on a bun, my blood sugar rose from 106 to 112 one hour after eating, a measly six points. With the McDouble, it rose from 93 to 123, a lot bigger rise, but still well under my 140 limit. With the Whopper, it got closer to that limit, rising from 93 to 137. And with the panini, I saw similar results with my blood sugar rising from 97 to 136. Even with about half the bread missing, I was still seeing some pretty significant blood sugar rises. But at least I was able to keep my blood sugar peaks from ever reaching 140. After all this, I went back to the same restaurants and ordered the same foods. But this time I ate all the bread and had my sandwich the way it was intended to be eaten. I expected higher blood sugar peaks, and I got them. With the breakfast on a bun, my blood sugar rose from 94 to 162. With the McDouble, it rose from 102 to 149. The Whopper sent my blood sugar from 94 to 162, the exact same numbers as the breakfast on a bun. And the Panini drove my blood sugar from 98 to 147. To sum up, when I cut my bread in half on these sandwiches, all my blood sugar peaks were under 140, and when I ate all the bread with the sandwiches, my blood sugar peaks were all over 140. Eating the four sandwiches with half the bread, I averaged a 27-point rise. Eating them with all the bread, I averaged a 58-point rise. Interesting, isn't it, that when I cut the bread in half, I cut my blood sugar rise in half as well. When I double the bread, I double the rise of my blood sugar. Looks to me like what was inside these sandwiches was inconsequential when it comes to blood sugar. But the bread that contained these ingredients was making all the difference in the world in the rise of my blood sugar. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Why don't you just eat these foods without the buns? Remove both top and bottom and you'll save more carbs still. <laughs> well, you're right. That would be the best thing. But there are a couple of reasons why this half measure can be helpful. First, a lot of people feel the need of some bread to go with their burgers and breakfast biscuits. When it comes to going breadless, they're just not at that place yet. So doing a little of this bun surgery is far better than simply eating the entire bun, and it can make the difference between blood sugar peaks that are safe and those which are damaging their body. And second, when you're in a restaurant, it's a lot simpler and quicker to just lose the top bun and start eating rather than ask for a plastic knife and fork, which will often break on you partway through your meal. Third, that bottom bread will help you fill up. Of course, you could bring a bag of nuts with you, which could fill you up, but again, a lot of people, especially in their early days of figuring all this stuff out, are just not quite ready to get that radical. So for a lot of people, this simple step of removing half the bread or more can make a big difference without being very much of a sacrifice. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up so YouTube will rank it higher in their search engine and more people will be able to see it. And consider subscribing to our channel and then click that little bell icon so that you'll be notified every time we post a new video. Well, that's it for now. God bless and see you again soon.